I have no script again today and everyone's going to suffer for it. This video is going to outline the scientific process I'm using to determine basically colored smoke formulas for a, it's going to be an ultimate guide video of sorts, but it's, and I already screwed up and have to voice it over. Just to clarify, this is not the definitive guide. This is just outlining the process of determining the formulas. And it's about time I address the colored smoke issues. Now, on fireworkscookbook.com, they started selling smoke dyes. The three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. And then from there, you can make secondary colors. So, for example, obviously, you know, yellow and, and red makes orange and and uh, blue and yellow makes green. So I'm using yellow, uh, yellow today as a primary and then as two secondaries. However... There's a few things I need to test. Well, first of all, I'll say this. This yellow formula I'm 100% confident about. So here is the performance of this yellow one, right? Oh, that's a winner. Holy crap. That's awesome. Oh my god. You see the performance of the yellow one, right? Now, here's a clip of that exact formula, just substituting the yellow dye for blue dye in an attempt to make a blue smoke, right? <laughs> I guess it's more like purple. <laughs> See, that white smoke is, is uh, basically filtered through that ash matrix. So all the dye is getting stuck. So if I kick it. There, you see. Yeah, it's, it's too compressed and uh, too much magnesium carbonate. You can see that it's, it's pathetic in comparison. And what that told me is basically that <clears throat> these dyes also have chemical influence. They're not just totally passive passengers in these in these reactions. It's not just the the sugar. It th academically it is, but like I don't know if it's a density issue or what. But there is a difference that the the dye. You need a different formula for every dye. Is what I'm saying. And so what I'm going to try and do is. I'm going to test all three of these. We're going to use this basically as the standard. And then we're going to compare both the color, quality, the duration of the smoke, and the volume output. And we're going to titrate basically the magnesium carbonate and the colors of the dyes. So this green is shares the same formula except for the dyes. What I did is I removed... All right, so I did 12% blue and 30% yellow it's not a half and half because half and half looked like garbage and then this one is 10 percent red and 32 percent yellow so we're going to test the color quality we're, we're going to observe that i'm going to compare it also to an enola gay little wire pull smoke um, to compare the green color in this to the green color in that we're going to see if this one beats it, that's great. If it's if it doesn't, then we can see what we can modify in terms of the color ratios. But also, by titrating the amount of magnesium carbonate, we can slow the reaction down or, or speed it up. You can also do that by changing the oxidizer level, but I want to keep... I'm going to start with keeping the ratio of the potassium chloride at 24.1% and the sucrose at 16.4. So I figured I'd just include you on this because I'm going to be doing it anyway, and I'm sure people are interested to know how I come up with these formulas. This yellow formula I stole from the military, and some of the military color formulas worked, some of them did not. So, for example, the military's M18, their new red formula, includes terephilic acid in a ratio that makes it basically pink. You know, it makes the red appear to be pink with the dyes that we're using.
we don't have direct access to these pure solvent dyes like Disperse 9 or or I don't know if it's Disperse 9 or Disperse 11 and, and Solvent 9 or Salt whatever. All these very specific gr Green 33 or whatever the heck it is. We don't have access to those because you need to buy them in 55-gallon drums on Alibaba from China or pay $35 per gram on eBay. Um, it took a long time to find some smoke dyes, and I found them at Fireworks Cookbook. You can buy two pounds for like 14 bucks or something, or 18 bucks. The ash matrix produced by the sugar when it burns, or all of the components really, but that ash matrix acts as a filter, and so you get these surges of discoloration, or in other words, you get like surges of dullness with colored smokes. Another thing that can cause this discoloration is if there is too much oxidizer in the reaction or if there's not enough magnesium carbonate and the heat of that reaction is too high it'll create a dull smoke because it kind of denatures the dye molecules the dye the, the dye molecules are heat sensitive that's why almost every colored smoke composition uses potassium chlorate as an oxidizer because the activation energy required for potassium chlorate is very low for it required for it to release its oxygen so you know, potassium nitrate, if we were to use potassium nitrate in these, these things, it would, it would burn too hot. Yeah, it would just look terrible. It would just be dull and terrible. And um, it would burn way too hot. On, I don't even know if you'd get any color out of a potassium nitrate, you know, colored smoke. But that's why you see potassium chlorate in all of these uh, formulas. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to core these out. We're going to install this helical igniter. Yeah, that was messy, obviously. All right, so I'm going to roll up this window screen or whatever the heck this stuff is called. Knock this out. Going to take some American Visco. I know this is probably laughable to some, some of the uh, old school guys out there. So here's that. All right, so now I have a primer formula here, XM83 primer. Here it is. A little bit of this and some nitrocellulose lacquer. Tendency to just over apply everything. So that's how I'm just going to leave it like this. And honestly, it doesn't matter if it dries in here. That's fine. It doesn't need to be completely dried. So I'm going to slide this into this bad boy. Push it down. And then I'm going to tie these together or zip tie them. I cut this guy and I'll cut the long one. Cut that guy. Now... We have a pull string igniter, pull cord igniter. Q commercial. So we're just going to feed this fuse through here. But yeah, normally I'll have a time fuse coming out of this. Anyway. All right, so now I'm just going to secure this here. You know what? Maybe I'll, I'll probably spray these black and then put a band across them just for the YouTube thumbnail. Okay, now we're going to test them and make some observations and then infer what we need to change in the formula. All right, so here's the play-by-play. -play. I'm going to fast forward through this. All right, so they're ignited. You can see that uh, the color starts to appear on that uh, Enola Gay a lot faster than these guys. I can use a faster burning visco. As the sunlight comes from the back of my head, the colors appear a whole lot more vibrant. The full spectrum of light, of visible light, is being reflected directly back into my eyes from the angle that I'm standing at. You'll notice when we go behind it, it appears a lot more dull. 
also the smoke is casting its own shadow. I really arranged these terribly. <laughs> They're way too close. The wind is in the worst direction ever. The yellow smoke burns out 17 seconds faster than the other two. So I need to add 1% magnesium carbonate to that yellow smoke mix, which I thought was perfect. When it's in comparison to these, these other two, it's extremely aggressive. Colored smokes are generally used for signaling, not obscuration. And I guess the objective is more of a consistent, smooth deployment of colored smoke than it is thinking you can obscure anything with it. But you'll notice that it pulsates and the colors become a little bit duller at the end here. And that's because it's being caught in that ash matrix. But all in all, it was very good. We got the colors right the first shot. Uh, the orange is super bright, super vibrant. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Just need to add 1% magnesium carbonate to the yellow. Okay, goodbye. I love you.